all right so welcome back to Doreen's african experiences today we are looking at a one bedroom house okay now we are going to start from something like this i'm going to break it down for you last time some of you were complaining that i was not showing you the numbers ideally i would love for my videos to have context so obviously the introduction is going to be a bit shorter but i'm gonna make it an added added stuff now this one bedroom house remember we've just finished a single room if you're going to build a one bedroom house these are very famous actually so don't underlook them um these calculations i'm giving you can work for bungalows most especially if you're trying to build a simple flat or simple apartments you can actually use them as well but the mechanisms especially when it, you need added materials you might need max pans you need more steel bars you know like that stuff like that you need of course more cement different mix you need more concrete stones like you need more stuff so this one will apply for people who are trying to build rentals if you're trying to build yourself a one bedroom rental and multiple of them this is for one set so always multiply and add like that like that okay if you're trying to build a simple apartment then we're talking one floor you can also use these they will work though you need more steel bars and you need max pans dpcs you need more stuff now let me try to break a few things down for you yeah oh uh, Oh, where is my paper? And now I'm getting a cup of Nanka Sudeo. Hey, disorganized me. Okay, here we are. Now, uh, if you're going to build it, your simple plan should be very simple. So for me, I'm assuming your plan looks something like this. Okay? Just a box, a simple box like that. You're trying to build one bedroom so your main and your entrance at the main or well, it has to be here or here depending on where your access road is so this has to be the main if your access road is this side and then this is the back door so i've assumed that you're going to have a simple store outside and you're also going to have a a shed okay so this is a shed you know just ignore my math but you're getting the idea yeah okay and then this is a store right so when you enter your house right i'm not putting a kitchen inside i'm putting this store here all the outside this is going to be your kitchen on the outside so when you enter your house you can just divide it in the middle like this if you're constructing these are different formats of how your plan can go this is a door so this can be the living room space and then this can be the bedroom and then somewhere here or here you can put your bathroom but ideally i prefer it to be below or you can even put it in one of these corners so basically the bathroom space has to be in a corner so i'm assuming it's around here yeah seems a bit of a stretch but okay this is a bath okay so when you come out here, you can walk out of the back door, walk into your living room space, and then walk out the main door. You have a shed, you have an outside store. These are quite common and they are good money makers, especially in my country. I've already spoken too much. Let me start the video, okay? Now, you're going to need a few tools. And some of the tools you're going to need, these are things that I've not put on here. But I've set aside 2 million Ugandan shillings on your plan. That money should be able to cover these things. That money should be able to get you some nails, some size, or some wood. And we have different wood. We have eucalyptus and timber. Now, this, uh, in the construction process, all these, they have different purpose. One of the purposes you can use these for is to um, make ladders, sit the small the small house this doesn't necessarily require a plan if it's just one unit but if there are many you do need a house plan and you need to get it approved you need some jerry cans these jerry cans can be used uh, to carry material around you can cut two 
or three and then the rest you can use them for water storage you need um obviously water you have to pay for water you have to uh get a dpc you know you have to get wheelbarrows you have to get a pions you have to like every single thing that you need before construction begins should fall within that two million also facilitating your workers not to pay them but to take care of them and feed them that should also fall into that two million and then any other excess material that i haven't mentioned and then now let me jump into this video so that we start okay but you get the idea yeah so i'm just going to be talking but at least i've showed you how this is going to go oh i almost forgot to tell you the dimensions of our house are going to be 14 feet by 28 feet on this is 14 feet and then this is 28 feet okay long oh, sorry length and width okay so these are going to be our dimensions 14 by 28 okay let's start enjoy the video all right so enjoy the aesthetics this is a one bedroom house and this is what our dimensions would actually give you now in this case the main entrance is actually not on the length it's at the width as you can see so the house whatever you do this one bedroom house is going to look like a box and uh, so that's what makes it easier if you wanted to roof it with a hidden roof but again we'll get into that later now um you're going to need about 2500 bricks for your foundation to actually pull this off for your foundation you you can use soil bricks or clay bricks now these bricks might actually remain a little bit but i've budgeted at the maximum point i've told you in the previous video i'm i'm not even estimating i know for sure the most expensive you should be buying a soil brick is around uh, 2000 sorry 250 shillings so you get the, the 250 shillings are multiplied by 2500 2500 is the total number of soil bricks you will need which amounts to 625,000 ugandan shillings now if you're not comfortable with the soil bricks and you want clay bricks especially if you're in a wetland or a wet area or a waterlogged area you need the clay bricks for your foundation a, a clay brick should cost you at least 350 shillings and those of you that are outside kampala it should even be slightly less if you're in kampala huh, your money might be a little bit different because you might end up paying up to almost 450 shillings <laughs> for a clay brick so i've, I've uh, taken the minimum price which might benefit majority which is 350 shillings so 350 shillings you multiplied by the total number of bricks and then you have um 875,000 ugandan shillings remember for these small bricks each elf truck carries 1000 of them 1k lokomi 1000 per so make sure that when those bricks come to you you count them what you do normally to count them easier most of you don't know how to count when they pack them they pack them on the same level make sure they're on the same level so if you mo if you count one line at the front and one line in the side you can easily multiply and you see how many are there without having to count one 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 okay now if you are going to build your entire house from foundation to wall plate with soil bricks or clay bricks those are the small bricks now the small bricks that you need to raise the rest of the wall around four thousand yeah they're around four thousand so now you're going to multiply with the same amount of money respectively remember the soil brick i've put it at 250 shillings and then the clay brick i've put it at 350 shillings i'll give you the totals at the end now for those of you that want to use blocks obviously in your foundation you have to put clay bricks for the blocks i've given you the lowest price i have for the eight inch block which is 2200 remember i deal in these blocks so at 2200 shillings per eight inch block not six inch there is a big difference 
an eight inches bigger wider this is a hollow block i can give you a 200 2200 shillings so you need 700 of those so you get 2200 and multiply by 700 you will amount to 1 million 540,000 ugandan shillings then you're going to need 30 bags of cement to build the whole thing up to all plates plus pouring that the the wall plate itself yeah so each bag of cement the most you should be able to get uh toro sem four simba all these other brands no i said sir toro sem four not two is thirty two thousand ugandan shillings but someone can also give you at thirty one five hundred or thirty three depending on where you are yay that's me now um so you're going to get the thirty two thousand ugandan shillings i'm applied by thirty now, if you're building with uh, concrete blocks, the 8-inch blocks I was talking about, you might pay slightly lesser than other people, especially when it comes to cement. Because these blocks, one of the advantages is they don't require a lot of cement. Now, you need sand. You need two forward trucks. Yeah, but they have to be the hipped ones. A forward truck, someone, depending on where you're buying it from, you can get it between 280 to 300 and even 50, depending on location. But I've taken 280 because it's the most prominent and common price, okay? So you need to. Lake sand, we have different types of lake sand. I think I made a video before. We have a Rela. Rela is the white, white sand, eh? the white sand. And then we have the brown sand. We have different types, but the grains matter. Make sure your grains are not too big. Then for plaster sand, you need one forward. One forward shouldn't cost you more than 150K. Maybe 160,000 Ugandan shillings is okay. So um, now we are sloping down. When you reach the point of your wall plate, you're going to need uh, steel bars. Steel bars, you need white ends. White ends are okay. This is not a very big place. So this is the shed. Your shed would look something like this. Exactly how you see. Now, all right. So I've had to add a few minutes to the video because, again, I talk too much probably. <laughs> no, I don't talk too much. I have too, many, too much information to give, too little time. All right. So we're still at the steel bars. I was saying at the wall plate up. So you need the uh, you need um, concrete stones. You can get half an elf. Half an elf shouldn't cost you more than seventy thousand Ugandan shillings. And then you need the steel bars. White ends. White ends. You need five white ends. Okay. And those are going to cost you thirty five thousand each. A total of one hundred and seventy five thousand Ugandan shillings. Now let me try to explain a bit on labor. Labor is going to be different. So labor wise, you're going to break down labor. It is going to be very hard for you to find someone building for you with concrete blocks at 25,000 Ugandan shillings a day. So you might have to prepare 30,000 Ugandan shillings per day. But if you can find someone of 25, good for you. But make sure they, are, they know how to actually build with them. Now, you're going to need two masons and two laborers. Masons are like the builders. Oh? So, if you're built for the concrete house, uh, the masons will take uh, 30,000 a day each, and then the laborers will take 20,000 a day each. But if you're building with the small bricks all through, then the masons will take 25,000 Ugandan shillings a day, and then the laborers will or should take 15,000 Ugandan shillings a day. It is still okay and the project should last five days okay if you have that right number of people those two those four people and each each of them is actually doing what they're supposed to do now for labor you might end up paying uh four hundred thousand ugandan shillings for those of you building with small bricks and then the blocks the, the labor is five hundred thousand ugandan shillings for the entire period of time now these are the totals which are quite interesting if you're building with clay bricks right in the foundation and blocks up your total should be six million seven hundred and seventy thousand ugandan shillings this is literally after the wall plate at the stage where you're ready and comfortable to move on to the next stage of roofing 
remember we have a an ex um we have a an amount of money added to this money which is two million Ugandan shillings so this money is actually supposed to you're supposed to remain with balance of it because chances are how you might end up renting your tools instead of purchasing them which is way cheaper now for those of you that are building with soil bricks that is from foundation to wall plate your total is five million eight hundred and eighty thousand ugandan shillings and then those of you that are building with clay bricks from foundation to wall plate your total is six million five hundred and thirty thousand Ugandan shillings. Now, elevation of this house is at 8 feet, but this one that you're watching in the video, the elevation is almost at 12 feet. It's too high because this, this is like, it's not a bungalow. I advise you, those of you that are trying to build uh, apartments or anything, don't make your elevation 8 feet. Nobody does that anymore. This 8 feet, what is for bungalows, yeah? Uh, these flats with, with short walls, they don't really look good, okay? They really don't. They don't look good. Um, yeah, but uh, my calculations were for Bangalore. So thank you for watching Darren's African Experiences. I hope you got something out of this, and I hope to see you in the next video. Uh, thank you for 9,000 subscribers, by the way. Big love to all of you.